Welcome to the Villas Marlin. Dating back to the mid-1980s, this is one of Cancun's first high-rise condo developments. After being hit by Hurricane Wilma, the property received some minor updates and became popular for vacation rentals. While many owners simply rent out their own condos on sites like Flipkey and VRBO, some people have actually bought up multiple condos and started their own little versions of hotels. The company we chose was called Oracle Tours. They rent out about 15 condos on the property and own about five of them themselves. This little rental company is run by two men named Alvin and Fernando. Unlike most rental deals where you're basically on your own, Alvin and Fernando serve as your personal concierge. They treat you like you're staying in their own home. They even offered on some occasions to drive us out to their favorite restaurants, show us around town. They're just absolutely wonderful people in the right business. They use their own custom app that you can delegate tasks with. Say you need more towels or you need groceries, directions, a pizza ordered, anything. They'll take care of it usually in less than an hour. And while I'd love to say that the entire trip was perfect and we didn't run into any problems, the complex itself did have some issues. To start, while the curb appeal of the building is okay, there's issues that lurk right across the street. The problem is that the complex is located directly behind a shopping mall, which looks hideous from the back, especially when you're up above looking down at the roof. I mean, there's just no way around it. The place is just hideous. The street down below isn't much better. Even at eye level, it just looks like you're walking through some kind of old industrial zone. It can be fun watching tour buses try to squeeze through the crowded street, though. But it's not all bad. The property is located right on Cancun's beautiful beach, and in the end, that's really all that matters. The old pools took heavy damage in the hurricane, so all the pools are new. And while they are smaller and do have some minor cosmetic issues, they're pretty nice. In general, you'll find that everything down near the waterfront was washed away, so it's all basically new from the mid-2000s. Probably the strangest thing about the property as a whole is the fact that the Property Owners Association either doesn't exist or is the most lax POA in the world. Sometimes it's just unbelievable. Want different color tile on your patio? Who cares? Whoops, there's a hole in the wall. Rusty lights and holes on your patio? Hey, who cares? Have a good time. We need air conditioning. Ah, let's just stick it on the patio. Or the hallway. And everybody else pretty much will do it too. In all seriousness, this place has a real issue with people putting air conditioning equipment everywhere. In many cases, the railings on rooms and even the color of the glass and hurricane doors don't match up. I'm all for freedom, but this is kind of getting ridiculous. I've seen trailer parks with more coordination than this place has. The vacant retail space on the ground floor can make walking to the elevator a little bit intimidating. Elevators themselves are a little bit claustrophobic, but by far the biggest issue is the reliability. These things sometimes would break twice in a single day, although to their credit, they got them fixed quite quickly. Now let's take a look at my actual rental condo. Hello everybody, today we're going to take a tour of the first ever penthouse that I've ever been able to rent. This is Penthouse 715 at the Villas Marlin here in Cancun, Mexico. You can see they have a combination lock on the door, which is a pretty neat feature. Go ahead and close this. One of the things you might notice right here as we enter, the door has definitely seen its fair number of days. You can kind of see the light coming through in some places. 
probably could use a whole new door there. Anyway, we'll go ahead and take a tour of the rest of this rental condo. You start here in the foyer. Note this really neat floor design where you have tile in the middle and uh, wood on the side. I've never really seen anything quite like that before. It's actually very pretty. As you first come in, there's this little doorway here, and you come into the full service kitchen. The only thing this kitchen is missing, missing is a dishwasher. Not a huge deal, just a minor annoyance. So you got the sink here, which doesn't have a garbage disposal, which is a bit annoying, because usually you think if you want to wash the dishes and do it by hand, it's nice to be able to get some stuff down the drain. Without a garbage disposal, you have to be really careful about that. Other than that, everything else in the kitchen is very functional and works very well. You've got a fantastic microwave over here, 1250 watts. Got an oven, stovetop, both are electric, coffee maker, toaster, and a full-size fridge. Not sure what happened to the top of it. I must have taken some real force to dent that. It's amazing how reckless people can be when they rent places. What is that? Techno space? Oh, it's Whirlpool. I was wondering what that was. So anyway, that's about it for the kitchen. It's pretty well equipped. I've seen better, but it's pretty nice. Then as you pan out here, you get into the main living area. You got a table. There are four chairs. I stole one in my bedroom. I'll get to that in a minute. Over here on the table, you have the wireless router, which has all the access codes right on it, which is nice, as well as a phone hooked up to Vonage. That comes free with the place. Again, a very nice touch. Then you have a full sectional sofa, which is pretty comfortable. Matching table. And this real neat floating desk is almost like bolted to the wall. Again, never really seen anything quite like that. Complete with a nice little high definition TV. Signal's not bad either. The owner of the condo even included his own little collection of books and movies for us to use during our stay, which again, nice touch. Really cute little room. You can see up here, this room features ductless air conditioning units. These, they're also known as split units. It's about as close as you can get to central air without actually being central air. This thing was brand new. I mean, the stickers were still on it when we came in. The owner hasn't had time to patch up and repaint before we got here, so I don't mind brand new air conditioning. I can deal with looking at the patch in the wall. That'll be gone in just a little bit, as soon as we're out of here, most likely. Out here, you have the downstairs patio. And you can see, it's a little problematic. Yeah, that's just never a really good thing when you walk out and the door falls apart. Uh, not even going to bother really trying to fix that now. It has some kind of worn down furniture on it. I've definitely seen better. You can see it's kind of like rusted on the back. I'll get you another view when I go into my bedroom and get you a better look at the patio as a whole. Just wanted to show the access point here. Also some exposed cable work, which isn't the most attractive thing I've ever seen. Like down here too, you've got all the power strips and things that are just hanging all over the place. It would be nice if that was cleaned up a little bit. It would just be a little more presentable. So as you come through here, yes, this unit is two stories. I'll get to that in a minute. You have the downstairs bedroom, the one that I'm using. You got another nice TV in here, a DVD player, separate air conditioning controls, some really neat lighting. This is out in the main room too. You've got this uh, indirect lighting you turn on on the top and these down on the bottom. It's real neat. And even above this bed, which by the way has a pillow top mattress, you know, my only complaint is that the blanket's a little thin, but you also have that custom lighting above here too. painting kind of looks like it actually was underwater at some point. There's a little water damage on there. You got a nice big closet full of all my messy clothes. And over here, well, that's not good. Did the door come off the track? What's going on here? Well, that wasn't broken when I was uh, using the closet about five minutes ago. Well, I would show you the shelving on the other side, but I guess I'll have to fix that later. The door stops are a nice touch, too. Kind of keep air flowing throughout the place. 
There's ceiling fans in almost all the rooms here. Another nice touch. Now out on my patio, you might notice that these door issues continue. First of all, I don't have a handle, and you might think that means I don't have a lock, but the owners did improvise with their own little solution here. You gotta, if I can get it up, a little broomstick you can throw on the door track. Not exactly first class, but I guess it gets the job done. The curtains are in really good shape. You got this beautiful curtain rod that's up here. They slide real well. That's a nice touch. And you can see my end of the patio. You got some areas that aren't exactly looking first class or great. Light fixtures are kind of rusted out. And one of the worst things, the air conditioner comes out here and drains on the patio, and there's always this river running all the way over to the drain that's over there. And you can see it kind of took a toll on this area too, and I think this used to be a spot for a window air conditioner. So, downstairs patio leaves a little bit to be desired. I built my own little computer desk out of coolers that were in the room. Anyway, that's about it. Now the next thing, which is really a treat. This might just be the least functional bathroom I've ever seen in a condo hotel or anywhere in my life. And I feel bad saying that because I really like the people that own and run this place, but this bathroom is just a little too nutty for me. I mean, I'll just start off here. First of all, I don't know where this mirror came from. And then you got the sink. Now, when you're traveling, it's nice to have a little space to put your things down. I mean, there's no shelf in here, anywhere. So this is all you get. There's this little glass ring that goes around the, uh, a little more light, that goes around the sink area. It sits on a pedestal like that. I mean, it's, it's eye-catching. It's just not very practical. You see, it kind of splatters all over your stuff when you run the water, too. There's, there's nothing really to like about this sink. And then, you got these two weird little things, maybe these used to hold a shelf, I don't know. I'm kind of using them to hold up some of my stuff, but it's just, there, there's nothing inviting about using this sink. And then, they've got this antique bathtub in here. And what makes this kind of silly is that there's no way you can just take a quick shower. I mean, they give you a shower handle that's built in here, but if you use this, you're just going to squirt water everywhere because there's no way to keep it in the tub. There's no curtain. I mean, that would be a disaster. Not to mention, the tub is pretty small. I mean, try catching all the water in that. So, I'm not a huge fan of that. I mean, there's all this room back here, too, where they could have put a shelf to put your shampoo and soap and things. But instead, I've ended up having to put it all on top of the toilet because I don't have anywhere else to put it. You see, even the drain like comes down and runs through a hose there on the ground. And this whole thing is just kind of jerry-rigged together. You got the toilet here, and like there's not even enough room to sit down on it because your knees will go into the tub. So, I mean, all things considered, this is about the goofiest bathroom I think I have ever seen in all my years of traveling. This is just bizarre at its absolute limit. <laughs> I've really never seen anything quite like it. Then you got the staircase heading upstairs. Notice there's no handrail. We've had a little issue with that, people falling in the dark. So you come up, you wind around, and this is where you really get the penthouse feel. First over here you got the upstairs bathroom. Nothing all that interesting to report. I got some footage of the shower running earlier when it wasn't covered in stuff. Then you got these two mirrors here, complete with lights, and you can see it's on a dimmer switch, which is a little bizarre because they're fluorescent lights, so you can't like dim them with this flicker. Not quite sure why it's hooked up to a dimmer switch. Here's a better look inside of the shower stall, dirty as it may be. This is my parents' area up here, so I didn't want to mess with their stuff and really tidy up all that much. And you got a window out here. 
Then, just to show it briefly, you've got my parents' bedroom area. It has that same custom lighting, custom cabinets, places to put your stuff, a big closet that's just like mine, another pillow top mattress, you got another separate air conditioner, this is the only one upstairs. You've got the custom lights that run all the way around, ceiling fan, real nice setup. Of course, the uh, the electrician work in here isn't exactly the best. Oh, by the way, that area around this air conditioner, the same story as downstairs. Get it, it just got replaced. They haven't had time to repaint and refinish the area around it. Then you've got the patio out here, which has its own little host of fun quirks and things to deal with. You can see there's the penthouse next door. It's seen its fair share of wear and tear. Light fixtures are kind of rusting down the wall. It just, it isn't a very inviting space. It needs some real basic maintenance done to it. I mean, it's just, really it's just falling apart. This is probably about the worst space in the room out here. You got some plastic chairs. It's decent, and I'm guessing the reason that not too much work or thought has gone into this little patio is because the room actually features a rooftop patio. And I could, I mean, that's pretty bad out there, I'm not going to lie. And I could excuse that if this patio was really, really nice, but it's kind of falling apart too. First of all, you got this door that doesn't even close unless you, like, force it. And even when you do close it, there's huge gaps that go all around it, all on the frame. And down here, I mean, you, a mouse could come through here. That's just crazy. But anyway, as we head out the door, you got this wooden decking. They almost look like you know, forklift pallets or something that they placed on top of the old tile. I'm not quite sure why they bothered doing this, because in the sun, this wood just bleached out probably the first year it was up here. They put these three chairs up here just for us. Apparently there's usually two, so they gave all three of us a place to sit. And that's nice. The view leaves a bit to be desired, though. You're basically looking at the roof of a shopping mall out this way with a lagoon behind it. I mean, that's not their fault. It's just, it was bad luck. They put in a shopping mall probably five, ten years after this place was built. So, they kind of got the uh, short end of that stick. And then we have the same issue with the light fixtures that are kind of rusting and falling apart. It's a brutal atmosphere to put light fixtures in down here. They're in the sun, you got the salt water, it's just nasty. Then you have this rooftop jacuzzi, which is a nice touch. You can enjoy your view of the ocean from here. And look at this, when you turn the water on, it comes through the conch shell. That is just a cute little feature. I gotta hand it to them there, I really enjoyed that. It feels a little slowly, but other than that, the tub works really well, and it's very nice. This table and set of chairs has been out in the sun a bit too long. You can see the table kind of is all warped and messed up. And the chairs themselves, most of them are either ripped or broken in some way. Look at this one, jeez. That one over there, too. So, I mean, it could be an inviting space. You also have to deal with the issues of the view. You're looking at a bunch of air conditioners on the units below you, but as long as you're sitting down, all you'll see is that beautiful ocean. And you got some basic maintenance issues again. You got paint. I'm guessing they tore that apart when they redid the air conditioning units, so I won't, I'm sure that's in the works of being fixed. I won't knock them down too much for that. All the lights are rusting down the wall. That's an issue. And the last interesting thing, apparently when this place was built, it was kind of optional what you wanted to do with your roof space. Like, the people next door didn't do anything with theirs. It's just empty. You got satellite dishes and all kinds of stuff up here. And if you go around the other side of this little partition wall... Got an umbrella for the table back here. Like, you see this area they didn't do anything with? There's a bunch of, like, junk in there. And if you, swir if you swerve around back... You got all kinds of air conditioning units and everything, like for this whole part of the building, that are all just sitting up here. Not to mention a satellite dish that looks like it's out of a science fiction movie. So, the place, the space is nice, a lot of the place is nice, but they've gotten a little behind on the basic maintenance, and I'm not so crazy about that. 
I'll be curious to see what all the commenters on this video have to say about this place. I'd love to say that this is the premier place to stay in Cancun, but unfortunately, it really isn't. But, it's a lot of fun, an easy place to have a great time if you can overlook the cosmetic issues, and you'll be staying with the two nicest hosts in Cancun. If you like the price, and you can overlook the issues, I would do it in a heartbeat.